Who would have thought that some turtles that are good at martial arts that hang around in sewers oh. could come up with such a good recipe? <laughs> Hello everybody! Hello. Welcome to our kitchen. Today we're doing another cookbook corner. You guys are loving uh, these videos, so thank you so, so much. Uh, we've done some really strange cookbooks, some really fun ones. Loads of you have been sending me links. Uh, you've messaged me. I haven't got back to everyone yet. I'm really sorry, but I have been sent some other ones that are, are really interesting, including today's, which is... The Ultimate Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Pizza Cookbook. Yes, it's the Ninja Turtles Teenage Mutant Heroes in a Half Shell. They have got a pizza cookbook. <gasps> because... They love pizza. They do love pizza. And I think yeah. um, it's a bit of a weird concept. They're like turtles that live underground that look after an old martial art rat and there's Shredder and Bebop and Rocksteady and April Jones. And it's a very strange concept. But when you watch some of the TV shows since then, that is way more normal. I mean, who came up with the Teletubbies? So what we're finding is with these cookbooks, they're either like really, really good or really, really, well, could do better, right? Yeah. Um, and this book is actually so far, what we've seen, it might taste horrendous. Actually, is it awesome in the words of the turtles? I guess they would say that, right? Yeah, but I, there's so many different ones that I never actually think. So there's like sweet one, savory. There is. Sweet and savory. Cooking tips. And then it's actually got some dough. So is an that overnight. Rat? That is Splinter. Yeah, that's the rat. So it's got an overnight dough. A little spoiler, I might have already made that. It's got a wheat dough, it's got a one hour pizza dough, um, and of course there are other ways to use it where you can just use uh, Greek yogurt, we've done that before on the channel. And, and other ways with like a cauliflower uh, base, lots of different options of pizza, but in terms of ideas, I mean like you've got your sauces there, a New York sauce. style sauce, a white pizza, pizza sauce. sauce, it's actually pretty good so far, right? There's basically sections of classics, there's a bit more quirky ones, there's some dessert ones, and then there's like a few burgers and uh, like side dishes as well, so we're actually really, really impressed with it. Can you pick out three random ones just to give a, a flavour? Can you see the egg and then there's all like bacon and stuff? Yeah, that sounds amazing, a breakfast uh, pie, because they do call pizzas pies. When the moon hits the sky is a big pizza pie, that's so glory. Okay. Oh, a ramen soup pizza. Mm -hmm. Obviously there's one with extra anchovies because, um, well, they, yeah, they like that. And I, anchovies just taste of the sea. Which one stood out for you, my friend, which is what we are doing today, just to give an honest review of this book. General, please. Today we are making... The Mac Attack. The Mac Attack. So what is the Mac Attack? It is... It's basically macaroni cheese on a pizza. It is a macaroni cheese pizza. And I was thinking, oh, that's going to be really easy. The base is going to be macaroni cheese and you put tomato sauce on it. No, it's basically a way of replacing the sauce and everything with a mac and cheese, but you still make the dough. And if we go back to the overnight dough chapter, boom, uh, we're gonna, if we're going to do it, we might as well get ahead and make the real decent stuff. We're going to do that right now. We're going to make the dough. Ready? Yeah. Let's dough. So there's lots of doughs that you can do uh, here. So obviously we've got done a few on the channel before. We've got these ones, but the overnight one just develops a bit more flavour because it's a slow proof with the yeast working overnight, nice and cold. Like you can do it in the fridge. Oof. All right. Yeah, flour just in. <laughs> <laughs> this is some strong bread flour. Oh, okay. It's heavy. All the ingredient recipe lists are just in uh, Americanized, so cups and stuff like that. So we're converting it. Um, I wish everyone could get along. <laughs> so. Olive oil, sugar, little bit of fast action yeast. There's your bread flour, and what was that? Water, cold water. So we'll just mix this for now. Sugar, yeast, and the strong bread flour. So in goes the water and the olive oil. So now at this stage is where I, I would prefer to add the salt in. That's only what people have told me over the years and I kind of stick with it. And this is actually a really lazy dough because you don't really need to, you don't really need to knead right now. <laughs> all we're doing, right, you just yeah. want to mix that together, okay? So that all, can you see the little pockets of flour and the moisture? You just want to drive it all together and it doesn't matter if it's lumpy. Leonardo, Michelangelo and Donatello make up the team and there's one other fellow, Raphael. <laughs> so now we have to cover it to seal it for at least 20 hours, so ideally overnight. 20 hours! I know, mate. So that's why it's an overnight dough. Let's wrap master. <laughs> you do realise what you just said is going to be sped up, so it's going to be like... <laughs> right, what I want you to do is to oh. look at this bowl, okay? And imagine that it's been there for 20 hours. Oh. <laughs> because this 
is the same size bowl and the same size mix that I actually made yesterday. What I want you to do, mate, is have a look at the bubbles in there. Look at all that yeast. Look what it's been doing. Yeast. It's crazy, isn't it? Can you see it? It's all yeasty and beery. It smells like a brewery. You put beer in here. The flavour has slowly developing in there. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be nice. Look how smooth it is, but that is a really, really wet mixture. So we're going to have to super flour down our surface to make the dough. It smells like alcohol. It does smell like alcohol, mate. Congratulations. Don't show your teachers this video. Lift that right out onto our floured work surface and it's pouring out to be fair really easily. Gather as much, because it's still wet, you want to gather as much flour into that as you can and work it together so that the moisture gets exposed so all that flour works in there, okay? You will have your own bakery one day. This is supposed to make enough for two pizza balls, so we'll divide it in two. There we go. Right, mate, what are they? They are two doubles. They are. Awesome. And that is a damp tea towel. Please place that over the top of the dough balls. So we're going to leave them for half an hour whilst I concentrate. I thought we were going to get on with the mac and cheese, but there's quite a mess over here. Well, I've got to be honest, that took a blooming long time to clear all that up. So we need to start to cook the macaroni. We've got here flour. Mm -hmm. What's that? Nothing, it's a spare bowl. <laughs> okay. Paprika, Dijon mustard. Milk. We also need some cream. This is some cheese, of course, macaroni cheese needs cheese, right? We've got some Gruyere, some sweet, nutty Swiss cheese. And we've got some cheddar cheese. So for the cheddar cheese, it says white cheddar cheese. And I was looking in the supermarket, I don't normally study that cheese that much. And it seemed to be to me, the more mature it was, like the whiter the cheese was getting. So I went for the super mature stuff. And what is this? Macaroni pasta. Yes. And it almost blends in with the photo. So we're just going to bring this up to a boil. That's what the package instructions say. And about six minutes, it should take to cook that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to go on our pizza. Just while that water does warm up, what was the other pizza you just spotted? What's chocolate chili pepper pizza with butternut squash. A chocolate chili pepper pizza with butternut squash. Yeah. That actually sounds quite cool. Return of the Mac. Just warming up some milk in the microwave. And did you just taste another bit of it? I tasted lots. Right, we're going to get some butter in here because this is where the sauce is going to be made. Chloe's having a well-deserved break after grating that cheese. I think she found it quite um, grating. Anyhow, I need to move fast on this. The butter has melted, the flour goes in, and we're gonna whisk like crazy to form a paste. So I'm now adding the milk in with that paste in two batches. Make sure you keep whisking it, but you can see how well that's thickened up. If you don't whisk it, you're gonna get a horribly burnt pan, okay? But it's telling me, I don't normally do this, it's telling me to actually keep it at a rolling boil for just a couple of minutes like that. So we'll do this, get it off the heat, and then we're back in curry territory then. Ah, oh, <laughs> steamy. Can you season that with some pepper for me? Bit of salt as well. Also need some chives, and curry gets to use the best kitchen gadget in the kitchen, in my opinion. And that is simply some food scissors, because <laughs> it's just so easy. Right, add in the paprika, now the mustard. Now three quarters of both your cheeses, okay? So you've got to leave a quarter of both for the end. Oh, look at that. Ah! Oh, so that's both the Gruyere and the uh, cheddar. I mean, like, you could just use cheddar, right? And the heat that's in there should melt that cheese into a thicky sauce, right? Ah, oh, wow, look at that. That's amazing. That didn't take long at all. So now goes in the chives. All of them? Yeah. This is the cream, all right? What does the cream do to it? Well, it's going to loosen up, isn't it? But we have to add the pasta as well, now. Now? Yes. Look at that. Outstanding work. Mm. Taste test? Mm. Creamy. Cheesy. Pastry. Back to pizza. I completely forgot we did that. We are actually making a pizza. What did you just say when I turned the camera off? She just looked at me and went, Dad, that is so good. You can tell the people on the camera, mate. I know. Is it really good? It is. Oh, that is amazing. It is really sort of tangy and it feels like there's so much flavor. It's not just like cheese and pasta. There is like an explosion, a journey of cheese and pasta. But it's the cheese tang. I think it's that Gruyere that's really doing that. 
but it's smooth and creamy at the same time, so you're getting the benefit of using the milk and cream to really soothe it in. Yeah, that is amazing. Oh my gosh, I am finding, when I look through these books, you can almost tell within a couple of minutes. And thank you to everyone that's been in touch to send them to me and send me links and the, one, the address. I'm sorry if I haven't got back to everyone just yet, but I could tell with this book particularly, I might have to do like a ranking system or something, but like this is outstanding. Who would have thought that some turtles that are good at martial arts that hang around in sewers oh. could come up with such a good recipe? Oh my gosh, I could just sit and That is amazing, isn't it? I know. That is really it is, comforting. It is so good. Right, that's going on a pizza. Wow, look at them. It is a little bit wet still, but you can stretch it now. You can do the steering wheel method, or you can just flour it down and roll it out. So uh, we were gonna use a baking tray and do a rectangular one, but uh, I found this uh, baking tray, which is pretty cool, so we can hopefully get a nice disc on there. All right, mate? It's actually, it's got some amazing tips on there because there's so many different ways you can cook a pizza. I, I dearly, <laughs> I dearly, mate, uh, wood fired oven, but I actually like doing the frying pan method and then shove it under the grill. We have a pizza oven setting in our oven, uh, which is basically, it goes to 280C, which is over 500, just over 500 Fahrenheit, which is in a really, really hot temperature. But with this, yeah, we just bake the whole crust on its own for a bit and then plonk the mac and cheese on top, which is a bit different. We're gonna try what the book says, and that is literally brushing the tray with some olive oil. So can you do that for me, mate? Yeah, not too much. Um, and the good thing with the oil being on the base now as well, it can kind of help Chloe slide it around. I don't know if it's just me, but a perfectly round pizza kind of freaks me out. And then right into the middle. And now, because you've got that oil on there, you can move it around. Do we make a crust? Well, you don't make a crust, mate, because it will actually, well, normally, normally it'll form a crust for you because it'll just rise because all the sauce is weighing it down. But it is telling us to bake the whole thing like this, like a plain crust. I don't know. Are you happy with that? No. Nope. You're not happy? Why aren't you happy? Because I need this one. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean that's the next step. Yeah, so apparently brush some olive oil on. I've never done this before. So it's weird, you know like when we did the um, kitchen gadget video the other day and we blind baked the pie, which I've actually randomly still got on the side and was delicious by the way. We're blind baking a pizza crust. Very hot oven, in that goes. It says it only needs five minutes just to brown the edges initially before the mac and cheese goes on. I think it's gonna be less than that because that is blooming hot. Wow, 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 wow. Ooh. Just, mate, do not touch this tray. <laughs> it is red, red hot. Oh, okay. And then, um, yes, good. Yeah, but try to leave a bit of a border for okay. a crust, okay? I like the specks of the chives on it, that's cool. Looks really, 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 really nice. So I'm just gonna, Give this another brush of olive oil around here because obviously now that's exposed clove, mm -hmm. it's gonna brown this up. So we've got those leftover cheeses. Nice. Oh, good work, mate. Look at that. I mean, this is like a cheese lover's paradise. All right, here we go. Hot, hot, hot. Woo, woo, woo. I'm scared. Oh my goodness. Holy <laughs> mother of a woman. That's hot, look at this, look at that shyness, Chloe. I'm just gonna have a little peek at the crust. Ooh, yes, that is done, mate. Obviously not as perfect as wood fired would get you that nice blister in and the grill method sometimes, but I'm, I'm happy with that. Chive it, mate. Yeah. What do you think, Chloe? I think this is one yummy, well actually I don't know that yet, <laughs> one lovely, jubbly, Pizza. Let's eat it. Oh, nom, 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 nom. These are some pizza plates. We've got the one half there. The other half obviously makes a whole pizza. And there's a little story there. Yeah. Those pizza plates are older than Phoebe. Yeah, we bought them before we even bought our first house. Yeah. See, I liked kitchen gadgets and weird things before I even <laughs> knew how to cook an egg. Ooh. Ah, it's like on the commercials with the gooey cheese, which is normally PVA glue. Mmm. Ooh. Oh my goodness, that is the ultimate comfort food. That is amazing. That is the best thing ever. Mm. I was quite happy to think, well, mm. if it's okay, we'll just scrape the mac and cheese off and have that on its own. But that freshly baked base. That is, that's a really good pizza day. Wow.
Mm. The really cool thing about this book is it was suggested by quite a few of you. You sent me links and I got hold of it and I'm actually super excited to keep hold of it. It's uh, mine! It's mine! We will be making the chocolate chili butternut squash pizza thing. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. We'll do that another day, yeah? It does, doesn't it? Yeah, that sounds... What? A strange combination of flavours. But a mac and cheese pizza, this is a mac and cheese pizza. I have seen versions where the base is the pasta and there's nothing wrong with that. That was outstanding. Claire, anything to say? You made that yourself from scratch. When you do yeah. cooking at school, right, you can say to your home ec teacher, I think we can take this up a notch. And mm, make macaroni and cheese. Yeah. It's really nice because you wouldn't normally put pasta on a pizza. No. All right, folks, thanks so much for watching. Uh, there has been such a variation in the books so far. I feel like I touched on it in the video earlier. I was going to do like a list, you know, like Top Gear where they do the cars or the lap times. He's yeah. the fastest, like the best book in my opinion. I I'm not sure about this one or the Bob's Burgers or the Snoop Dogg one. But what about, <sighs> what about the Disney one? Yeah, that as well. That's what but I mean. It's, it's the World Doll one that we did ages ago. Does that <sighs> Does that count as the very... Right, you're making it an Olympic event now, mate. I don't know. Maybe I'll just say... You can probably tell from each video, actually, if you, I like it or not. And there are a couple, spoiler alert, that I don't I think are going to be as good or have as much effort as... One like the turtle, I'm like, no, that's not going to be great. And it was amazing. Like, so good. So I highly recommend you get hold of the book. Cheers for watching, guys. And I think we're going to have a very carb-filled afternoon and a big old run. See you later, guys. Bye. I actually look a bit like Krang wearing the pink thing. Doesn't matter. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Holy mother of a woman.